Good afternoon, everyone. Greenland gaining 150 billion tons of snow and ice, the most ever recorded. Jumping back to 1939, same newspaper headlines, Greenland's glaciers are melting. Cryosphere Arctic ice data, 1938. Incredible ice recovery in the southeast of Greenland. The Lost Squadron, they had a ditch onto the Greenland ice sheet. And after the Greenland ice sheet started recovering, it covered those plains in 268 feet of ice. Cooling surface water temperatures globally, the blob as well as around Indonesia. This is in March 2000. Notice the heating in America. Oh, look how cool it got by August 2015. Temperatures down in Greenland. Temperatures down in northern Canada. University of Huntsville, Alabama, showing us a downtrend in temperature, yet NOAA shows a huge, huge spike. Since satellite measurements have been recorded, which the IPCC relies on to get you to believe in global warming, this has showed the most ice and snow ever since that time in 1990 to today. A new record has been set for ice gain on Greenland. We're talking about cyclical patterns, so when we do jump back into Greenland's ice glaciers melting stories from 1939, you need to revisit history with the cryosphere Arctic ice data from 1921 to 1938 showing a melting pattern. I like the old maps here, thought I'd show you this one. Case in point, World War II planes found in Greenland 260 foot deep below the ice. It's called the Lost Squadron. They had a ditch onto the ice sheet in World War II. But as the Greenland ice sheet recovered, these planes were buried in 268 feet of ice. The location in the southeast corner, you can see that indented bay. Another trick of the IPCC is to show you the melt data specifically from the highest summer months. So you know what? I'll cherry pick data and I'll go right into September, which is only one month later than that. But look at the cooling trend. It's at the very top of the range. And if the Greenland glaciers were truly shrinking and are going to raise the ocean levels, research stations like this should not be nearly covered and buried in snow and ice. I highly encourage you to come over to DMI and check out their site. They have a really great rundown on the different areas of Greenland and the ice concentrations. When we look at the scary chart of the 2005 ice melt extent, and then we compare that with 2015, there's a dramatic shift in melting versus building. We're in the building accumulating ice and snow right now. The mean average from 1990 to 2013, 2015's blowing far above that, almost above the 2% deviation on that. A different look at the fraction of the ice sheet surface melting. 2012, obvious, that was one of the warmest years, but it's getting cooler. Look how quickly it just cooled off. Surprisingly, they don't have any updated data for the entire year of 2015 yet. More published peer-reviewed data shows the exact same increasing ice, but this was 2005, so I'm really curious why we were never shown this indication of increase in elevation rate due to ice adding. Sidebar for you here, this is a real nice GISP ice core. So when we talk about ice cores from Greenland, this is what they're looking at through the magnifying glass. These layers of snow and ice compressed, showing you the difference between summer and winter. Greenland temperatures downtrend since 2003. Nunavut, Canada, Baffin Island down. Is it just me or is that a lot of cooling since 2013? 
jumping over to the global sea surface temperatures, I circled in blue the areas that have cooled the most. Please notice Indonesia and also one of the IPCC's claims as a hiatus and pause in global warming was that there was so much surface wind and the trade winds from Hawaii direction that it pushed the heat down into the oceans and that heat accumulated around Indonesia. False claim. Sea ice extent, 2015, a different view for you. Environment Canada also showing where it's cooling and if Greenland is truly increasing in ice density and there's more snow, we should start to see it in other areas that are surrounding Greenland. So Hudson Bay, it's increasing ice as well. Shortest melt season on record in the Arctic. Let's jump over to NASA's Earth Observatory. Land surface temperatures, March 2000 market difference in August of 2015. August should be the hottest month. Look how much it cooled. Sea surface temperatures should show something different, right? Remarkably, this chart has not been updated for four years. Obviously, they're hiding some data that it's cooling. They want you to see to the red. How is that four years not updated from NASA? The AMO, also referred to as Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, which shows cooling water temperatures. And I'll bring you back to the global anomalies. If we start to see it, it should show up everywhere if it is cooling. Here's the newest September 2015 land and ocean temperature departure. Look where it's cool. Everywhere the blue is cool, Indonesia. Ural Mountains, Central Asia, the blob below Greenland, most of the Southern Ocean. Australia was pummeled this year along with New Zealand with record cold temperatures and snow and they're right in the bands of blues. So was Argentina, Chile. UAH seems to be the most reliable data going forward with satellite measurements. They do show a downtrend in temperature, yet somehow NOAA shows a one degree increase. How is that possible? How are we being lied to so much where NOAA can come out and have completely different data that shows warming, warming, warming? And Ohio State University to try to explain Antarctic melting as gains the rocks push up because of decreased pressure which actually raises the ice sheet which gives a false measurement reading from the satellites taking altitudinal data showing an increase in ice but it's actually decreasing because the earth rise it didn't actually decrease ice but the earth below it pushed up more to raise the ice is their explanation we're being lied to left right and center about temperatures across our planet and with the information provided about greenland ice recovering and the cooling temperatures on both land and sea across our planet in the northern and southern hemispheres, I will not pay a carbon tax. I absolutely say no. It's a cycle brought about by our sun. Solar minimum is upon us. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you see what I see after this information was given to you. Please subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030. Pass this out through your social media, and I will keep stories like these coming to you.